Hi, I'm Dr. Bill White again, and uh, we're going to be talking about phallical separators. I'm sure you're getting tired of listening about them, but they're a wonderful uh, tools that do special jobs for you and just make the orthodontics so, so much easier that I hope you learn to use them if you're not already using them. Uh, they're a very fine tool, and I want you to watch this case right here. It looks so tough, and yet it is made simple by a palatal separator. Let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, young lady, a very pretty young lady, and you don't see the uh, malocclusion when you look at the face. The face looks good. The vertical height is fine. Everything looks great. But when you look at the teeth, I'm going to show you the models here. Now, this is after we've started and everything, but they're still crooked as so all get out. Uh, now, here is the models. And <clears throat> it's hard to see how her face looks so good. And yet, she's in a total crossbite from the lateral over here all the way around through the motors. They're in crossbite in here. And the, this is the cuspid. And this is the central, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is the other central. Here's the lateral, the cuspid over here, the two bias, and the motors back in here. And how it got in this situation, uh, it's hard for me to uh, realize how it got here. I don't really know. Uh, a lot of cases, I can tell you how they got there and why they got there. Uh, but anyway, this one, I can't. But this is the way it is. And so we have to correct it. And I knew immediately what I wanted to do on this particular case. I didn't have to look at anything. You can just look at this case and tell what you want to do. Uh, this is the midline. And you watch when we get through with this. This midline will be line right up with there. I want to take this side of the mouth right here and move it out to where these molars are fitting like this, you see. And lap over the, the lower molar here and we'll get it that way. Just watch how it goes. Now, uh, I may not have enough pictures here to really show you everything about it, but it is a uh, neat case. And this lateral is lingual back here. We're going to have to open a gap and bring that lateral through and open this face as as the palatal separator tries to open this case or does open it. And we take up the space. As it opens here, we move this to into the space and we're going to have space for that lateral to come through but it's in the lingual, and as I drag the crown through, the root is going to be tapered way back there with way too much torque. So we're going to have to put reverse torque to bring the root out, and uh, you can watch that develop too. So there's a couple of interesting things taking place in this uh, case, and I want to try not to show you cases that don't have any uh, outstanding the interesting thing about them, you know, we tried to pick out only the cases that were uh, very interesting to take all these pictures of. So anyway, on the right side of the mouth, now, this is a really good class one relation. It's kind of tilted a little toward class three, even over here. And you see the by first by cuspid and here's the cuspid right here and there's the lateral kind of behind the cuspid you can see it better as you look down on top of it <clears throat> but it's a it's a interesting case and you wonder how on earth that case got in that shape 
uh, or at least I did. I have not figured it out. Now when we look down at it, we were looking through here a while ago, and you could see that lateral right here. And we're going to have to open this gap here and here. And we'll be opening this space between the uh, centrals. And as this opens, we're going to be pushing this tooth into this gap. Now, if this were an older person, we'd want to open this and spend all of our time opening it and then push it in. But we can just lightly push on this tooth here. And as this space opens, this tooth will move into that space right there. It's a interesting to watch these cases, uh, how they progress. And after you get a, a good bit of experience in here, you will know what to do to cases more than you will be able to do for them. <laughs> you will know what you like to do more than you can uh, do, really. And I don't feel bad about that. That's just the way it is. It's a lot harder to do it than it is to think what is the correct thing that we should do in this particular case. Now the lower's a little messed up in here, but not uh, not a great deal. It's in pretty good pretty good shape here. So, all right, here we start off. <clears throat> and we put a little wildcat wire. That's back when we had this. This is uh, 1983. You see right here. And uh, we didn't have a lot of 016 and 014 night tie wire or 018, things like that. So we used this little wildcat wire, which we <laughs> worked with it just about as good as the other wire so this thing this wire does a whole bunch of things it's kind of widening this gap we put some loops on them back here at the back we're opening this space right here gently not a whole lot of force in there and this is being opened by the palatal separator and as it opens up this moves it into the spot uh, and you watch now, this midline is going to end up right there. It's interesting. If these teeth are going to jump over. Now, if they give you any trouble jumping over, we bond something on top of them temporarily to jump it over. But usually you just push it up there and they'll shift and one night they'll just bite on the other side and it'll be over here. You won't have to worry about it. Now, a lot of these unilateral uh, cross bites, we come over here and we try to hook elastic up here and come in and hook on the lingual button down on this side, you see. And up here we would hook them and come out and hook over here. So that gives you a unilateral pull in this direction and your palatal separator, of course, is pushing the same in opposite direction it's the same thing in there it'll be exactly the same force over here it is on this side and we kind of make it do a unilateral thing i don't show that i don't think i've got any uh pictures of that elastic but we use that if we have a unilateral movement that we want to do all right this showed the uh this space is going to open here and we're going to push this tooth into this gap as it opens from the palatal separator. I hope everybody see that it's not any complicated mess in there and the seeds are on the palatal separator. You're not going to move them but we've got a expanding loop here so this this wire is pushing in that direction. This is pushing here and here. But the whole wire is coming this way and it will open back in here too. So we'll gain space for all these teeth as they come through. It just makes 
a simple case out of a case that looks very difficult. All right, they're going to jump over the gap. This will probably be the hardest spot to get over. I don't see, I don't think we bonded anything on there. We ought to uh, band this tooth before a little long. I like to band all the lower second molars if I possibly can. Okay, now this is 412 of 83. Now here is the palatal separator. It's in there. Now we make these in our office. I mean, we fit these bands and get them good. You take an impression of them and take them off very carefully and put the ends of the impression as accurately as you possibly can. And then fill the thing up with stone, but don't jar them loose while you're vibrating the, uh, the stone into the uh, model, you see. And then these bands will be on the model. And then you make your palatal separator. And we a lot of times go back and push on your second motor with the extended part back here. So now we'll open this and make darn sure you have the the opening here in front so you can push it backwards as you activate it, you see. You rotate, that's a quarter of a millimeter every time you do a fourth of a turn with that. And that opens this. Now look at this palette suture right in here. Now that's going to separate right in there. And this is going to separate. And you won't see this separation very much, but it'll be there. And then we're going to take this tooth and put it into that gap and bring this one in here. So we're going to bring it all out, you see, and then widen it. And this will all be widened out so when we get through. So she'll be able to breathe a lot better if that is where the uh, breathing problem is. She had no increase in vertical height of the lower third of the face. Well, let's see now what's in the next. Let me tell you a trick on putting thousands of separators in. You virtually always want to band these teeth. Don't push a bar up against them because the teeth just lean out. You push the crown out and the dirt root will go back in the other direction. So band it and cement it good. And the way you cement it good, you put this thing in the person's mouth, push it down in position after you've made it, of course, get it in there and push it up and let them wear it for about a week and get them back in and slip that thing out and wash it up good because it has quite an odor. It gets food and stuff up underneath that band and you wash it real good and rinse it all out. And you can take this palatal separator and just go to take it to seat this very good after it's kind of adjusted the teeth to those uh, bands. So you put your cement in it and you press that thing to place and push it up there and it'll go to place real good. And I've never had one come out after we cemented it in. I've never had one of them come out like that. And they are cemented, and I hold that cement down until I can see some coming out the other side of that band, if I possibly can. Well, I want that cement to fill that band completely. I want that tooth held rigid. So when I go apart with this crown, the roots go with the golden crown. <clears throat> now they will lean a little bit, but not not very much. I'm getting a little dry here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, <coughs> we're gonna cement them rigidly, and they they separate. So we'll open this thing up somewhere like that, you see. And get it out for this. Okay. Now, 
<coughs> excuse me. All right, we've got the lower arches lined up, and it's doing real good. We'll get it finished out. Now we, now we've banded the second molar back here. You see, and we've got everything lined up. The uh, these cusps are going to go inside that uh, upper. It's going to hang over. Now I put my brackets on molars about three quarters of a millimeter lower and have them cemented or spot weld to the band there. Have it done it to people that make your bands. And then I put all the bands, the brackets, a little bit lower on these teeth here. So the arch wire just lays right in there good. But this is a secret. It keeps you from hitting these bands with a cusp of the upper tooth down here. So I put all my little bands three quarters of a millimeter lower. All right, we'll go on and see what comes out over here. All right, I don't know. This is 484. And you see that midline that was way over here? I don't know where it's about there. But it's moved over almost exactly where it went. Now this tooth, we haven't been paying much attention, but you see this one is torqued correctly on the left, but this one is not. This one is laying at too much of an angle or has too much torque, and so we have to catch the bracket, I mean catch it right on each side of the bracket and have the wire going downhill like that. You see, and you have to flex it and put it in there, and that wire is pushing down on this, and it'll be pushing up on it at the back, and it'll bring that root out like that. So you bend the wire, which normally would be like this. You have to bend it right in here. You flex it down and stick it into the slot, and the wires tend to do that to the tooth. And it'll rotate that tooth out. In fact, you may have more torque than you need, so when you get the tooth like you want it, you take that and take some of that torque out of it right there. But that's the way to torque one. And you have to do individual torquing like that. Now we don't. But now we got in this position. This is simple now. The case looks, uh, I mean, just like a simple easy case and it was a simple case really uh, to start with but we still got to move this over this cusp it needs to come up and it's hitting pretty close right in there let's see what we did here okay we still need to stay in there a while like that and we'll look at it several times here now we're doing a little rotation down there on this one. You see, we attach the elastic there. Let's see, I'm going to have to go back and get my, my little spot in again. Now we know how we've got all kind of videos on how to, how to do this, you see. And we can pull this tooth around very easily and you align this this custom with this you see it needs to be going that needs to be some right there all right <coughs> now we're still not as far you see how we're hitting right here and we're quite a ways here so we're going to have to move this in some and this out some and we'll get this line line right up down in there and it's a little better at this point and down on the bottom looks good we've about got those all lined up now we've gone into 85 so we've been working on this case now a while to let this bone structure fill in we widened this out and by the way we moved all the teeth in this part of the mouth 
out in this direction. We did no surgery, and I will guarantee you that the bone structure is around those teeth as good as you would ever get it, and you don't have to go cutting the doggone jaw to get it widened out there. We moved those teeth out where there is, was no bone, no teeth, anything out here, and we brought all those teeth out, and that's the way to do it. And I don't know how I've been preaching that for 25 years, and the, they will still say, well, we got to split this palate, we got to uh, go up in there and surgically move these teeth out, but we move those over. Of course, we use a palatal separator, and we fill the, uh, the, the space open here, see, and we needed the space over here, so we pushed this tooth into this space and created a space there that would hold the lateral. Now, if you just think the case through, you don't need all this cephalometric training and all this stuff. You can figure out what you need to do more than you will be able to do on most orthodontic cases. But you need to really study them and look at them and figure what you're going to do. Don't try to memorize, oh, how I'll do this in this case or this. Just figure each case out. It's a real challenge, you see. These little brackets here are marvelous for rotating. Those wings, you see, everything. That's nice. All right, that's lined up down there now. Now here's the palatal separator. That's the way it was. You see how wide these teeth in this space in here. And you look at that space after we spread it out. Now here we had to come in here with some midline elastic and we pull back on this back here with the class three elastic and to get this thing to work out. It's the way you use these elastics, so you shift the teeth around most any way you want to. You got to have somebody that'll put them on, though. So that's a drawback sometimes. Now here the case is after we've taken things off, but you see we do not have enough reverse torque in this tooth. This is the way it ought to look, you see, and this is all lined up good. Now we'll continue to move this root out by putting that torque or reverse torque in this this tooth right there. We'll bring that out. You can put it anywhere you want to if you just learn how to twist that wire and put that torque in it, put it in the bracket. Now for every middle for every thousand clearance you got in there you will lose four degrees of torque. Thing. Now, okay, here we go back again, and it's torquing pretty good, and we've got the wire, it's in a little fuzzy, you see, it's looking better, it doesn't like too much, in fact, there's very few people would even see it there, and then we're going to close that space up over on the left side of the mouth, okay, here we go, this is 85, and that midline, we pulled it a little past now. It'll probably migrate back over. You see where this cuspid is now? It was way over like that. That's right up there. And this one is virtually touching in this side. And we didn't get pretty well uh, ready to start taking this thing out or thinking of taking it out. Here, don't get in in too big a hurry. We want it to be really on the button when we take it off. Okay, this side looks better now. This tooth is torqued pretty well. It's coming out now. You see it get longer as you torque the root comes out in this direction, you see. I've taken too long on this case, but it's worth spending some time to see what happens here. Alright, the torque on it is not quite like the other tooth, 
but the tooth is beginning to look real good. Space is closed up. The midline's pretty well. And I don't worry about midlines too much because there can be some change in some of the shape or the size of some of the teeth, and that'll throw the midline off. As long as you've got this inner digitation correct back in here, then I don't worry too much about the midline. Is you can have a change in the shape of some of the teeth that would show that. All right. There, this, this side looks good. And we're about ready to take this out. See this thicky cuspid? You see that cuspid eminence there on there? And you've got to learn how to put these little bins in here to line these teeth up this way. That's all it is. You see the cuspid eminence right here. You don't just stick these darn wires in. You pull them out of the package and stick them on there. They don't. The wire doesn't know and nobody can tell you how thick or thin the teeth are. And so you've got to look at it yourself and say, well, I need to bend this one out three quarters of a millimeter further out because this tooth is fatter in here than this one is. You've got to put that little personal deal in there to make it right. Or if the torque is pretty well good enough right there now. And it's not as much as this one, but I think the gum is kind of filled in on that one some. Nobody is. Alright, here is the case. When we started, this is a central of the cuspid, and there's the lateral behind the cuspid, you see. And this is the total cross line from there all the way around. Now, I'm going to show you the case after we finish. There it is after we finish. This lateral was behind that cuspid. That cuspid went back. We opened that space, and this space was created by the palatal separator. The separator is the tool to do the job. The torque on this tooth looks good. Now, I mean, that, that looks about as good as you can get it. Uh, and I don't get all mine that good, but uh, this one is good. And you keep it there and let it come occlude in, and it'll wear in even better five or six or eight or ten or fifteen or twenty years from now, or fifty years from now, you'll have it back. Now there's where that was. There's the center of the top, and here's the center of the bottom, and you see where that went to. Now look at it. It's a little past that. And this is a darn good looking set of teeth. You got a, this torque over here is a little more than it is. At least the gum shows up a little more. That's, uh, not, that's not a big problem. If I could get all my cases to finish that good, I would uh, be doing better than I normally would. So, anyway, I hope you can take this video and learn what we did here. And you can go home and do this to cases the rest of your life. And you'll make a lot of people look a lot better and feel a lot better about doing what they do. And orthodontics, to me, is a, it's, it's something that you take pride in. You don't mind sticking your name on this. Don't try to do as many as you can and just slop them through. Do beautiful work. You get the canvas as a human being and try to straighten those teeth out like uh, you would want them on yourself or your wife or your daughter and, and you will do a pretty good job of it. So here was the way that palette was, and there it is in retainer, and I put a little bite blade. You have to watch these things. You have to trim those cingulums off a little bit, <coughs> but uh, probably not uh, too much, but make a little shelf out of it. And uh, this is 
And this is a good patient now, boy. She wears this potato. You can see where it sits up in the mouth. She went her whole life up until we got to her with this terrible crossbite. And I'm sure it was really bothered her a great deal. And she appreciates what you did. Uh, sometimes I think when we take a kid and never let their teeth get crooked, they don't have the uh, gratefulness about them that somebody like this that got up to where she is. Pretty much a teenager girl, you know, that's older. And she is uh, I mean, suffered all her life with that huge crossbite. She probably didn't open her mouth or didn't smile much. But now she's got a gorgeous set of teeth, and she it'll just change her whole whole life. And that's what's wonderful about orthodontics. And uh, the bottom is looking better. It's lined up better and everything. Now here's a retainer. Nothing goes across here. You don't have to, you know. They'll stay in like mad if they don't put a little composite underneath them, a couple of places like that, and snap over it. You know, just put it in with a retainer in, and you can push the retainer away from it. And you can make them snap up in there where you can hardly get them out you know, if you want to. Alright, here's the young lady. And I think this may be my last picture, and it is. And I appreciate you watching. And I hope you uh, sign up with our group. And I pre appreciate it very much. And I hope that you'll be able to do this on many, many patients from you. These video videos go <laughs> all over the world. I was just floored by the people that write back about them. And I hope you're able to do as good as this or better. So I will sign off from here and we'll say goodbye.